All right, I gotta tell you a little story here. We're talking about nitrogen next. And we had some issues on our farm. This is back 10, 15 years ago when Darren and my dad and I. I, I thought you were going to blame it on me. When Darren did, I was like, wait a second, why are you no, going to dump is a this joint, all on no, me? No, this is a joint deal where every year we'd get to the end of the year and we'd say, boy, our crop looks so good, but we just didn't get the yield we wanted, especially with corn, but soybeans, other crops. And we said, well, what do we need to fix, like in corn? Well, I don't know. Well, what do you think? Well, I don't know exactly. Well, how about we put more nitrogen on? Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's put more nitrogen on. So we'd throw more nitrogen out there and how far do you think that got us? It didn't get us anywhere. We started doing some plant tissue analysis because we had uh, somebody advise us to do that. So we started doing plant tissue analysis every week during the growing season, just in one field that first year. And I just remember how embarrassed I felt when every single week our potassium, boron, and zinc came back, not just low, but deficient every single week. And every single week our nitrogen came out excessive. Okay, excessive on nitrogen is not good. That could potentially pollute our environment. It's a waste of money and it's not making me money on the farm like I want it to. That's not a good thing. So what we're trying to tell you here is, yes, nitrogen is incredibly important, but it's certainly possible you may be over applying it just like we were on our farm. We get right back to taking good soil tests and checking out what you have in your field. The other thing is looking at how much does my crop actually need. We were just talking a little bit ago about sulfur and how that comes out of the organic matter there's a tremendous amount more for nitrogen that comes out of that organic matter. Here are the numbers. 20 to 30 pounds per acre of nitrogen is going to come available for free every year per percent of organic matter. Farming is often a generational thing and we hear people talk all the time about how I want to leave my ground in better shape for my kids than when I got it. Well, one of the ways you can do that and give your kid all kinds of money is by building up that soil. If you increase your organic matter, let's say two or three percent over your farming career and you leave that for your child, just think about having, if you had 3% more organic matter, that's 60 to 90 pounds of free nitrogen that basically for that kid's whole farming career, he's going to get for free every year. Hopefully he says thanks. Well, hopefully he even understands it. And really talking about building up organic matter, it doesn't have to cost you a penny. You can do that just by making smart decisions on your farm, reducing tillage, maybe changing up your crop rotation to have high residue crops and crops that have lots of root mass. I mean, there are just simple things like that that you can do to get more nitrogen for free. Okay, but let's talk about in the short term, tie up of nitrogen in things like corn residue. When we've got a high carbon crop and low nitrogen, then that nitrogen is going to get sucked up by the bacteria that are trying to break down the high carbon. So what happens is, for example, if I raise continuous corn, I will typically recommend that a farmer apply an additional 50 pounds of nitrogen. Now eventually that'll come available, okay? But it might be several years from now when it comes available in my crop when that residue totally breaks down. But you've got to look at extra nitrogen in situations like that. You also have to look real hard at your soil test, not just the top six inches, but it's also important to test a little bit deeper, especially like in, in our area where we farm, it's relatively dry and our nitrogen doesn't always leach down. In fact, very seldom does it leach down because we've got heavy soils and dry conditions. So I want to test not just the top six inches, I want to test the top 24 inches for nitrogen because if I can get roots down there, I can suck up most of that nitrogen this coming year. Here's the most important thing we want you to know first. You've got to look at the cation exchange capacity level in your soil to figure out how much nitrogen your soil can hold at any one time. Take your CEC times 10 and that'll give you the number of pounds. Let me make one last comment here as we close with that CEC value. Many of the guys Guys raising 350 and 400 bushel corn in our country have very low CEC soil. So don't think, oh no, I only have a CEC of eight. I just can't raise big, big yields on my farm. That's not true at all. You definitely can. It just means you're going to have to do multiple applications of fertilizer so you don't lose any, so it costs you the least amount, and so your crop can do the best. And of course, you've got to have the right balance of overall nutrients in your soil. Just like sulfur we were talking about earlier in the show, if you have the right level of sulfur, your nitrogen is used more efficiently too. Well, another way that nitrogen gets used more efficiently by your crop is if you don't have weeds. We'll talk about controlling our weed of the week coming up next.